International policy meetings like COP26 offer politicians a real opportunity to accelerate shipping's route to decarbonisation. And as John Briggs reports, Lloyd's Register is calling on world leaders to seize the initiative, to build on the sector's work over the past 10 years and act now. Over the last decade, shipping has made huge strides towards a decarbonised future. For industry leaders, the question now is how best to build on the progress made and to quickly scale up viable solutions. There's lots of uh, determination, a real excitement around supporting the industry through this so-called fourth propulsion revolution. And at Lloyd's Register, what we are now really focused on is ensuring how we make that a reality before the end of this decade. To achieve the industry's ambitious objective will require 10 years of intense action, greater cross-sector and industry collaboration, and for national governments to keep pace with the progress already made by the private sector. What we're focusing on now is trying to ensure that governments around the world, and there's a really critical meeting and, and discussion point around COP26 uh, in Glasgow later this year, that governments are also recognising how quickly the private sector is moving and collaborating and how quickly the demand for zero emission fuels will be coming. The world's first maritime classification society was also the first to say zero emission vessels needed to be commercially viable and in operation by 2030. And it's the reason behind the Castor initiative, a collaboration between six global partners, including Lloyd's Register, drawn from the maritime sector and beyond. We need to solve this energy transition equation together. We need friends, we need, we need, we need partners. And this is why uh, I'm extremely proud of the Castor initiative, uh, which comprises of six partners. The six aim to design, build and commission the world's first ammonia fuel tanker by 2025. World leading car society, we have a world leading shipyard, we have a world leading engine maker with a world leading ammonia producer, and we've got a world leading uh, port authority, all bringing an important part of the jigsaw. The Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore is working on creating the new refuelling infrastructure. We are working towards being a multi fuel bunkering hub to meet future demands of the global shipping industry. Singapore is an ideal innovation lab for decarbonisation because we have the elements of a global hub port, international maritime centre, a top bunkering hub and a reputable Singapore registry of ships. Yara is very enthusiastic being a part of the Castor Initiative and ammonia as a zero emission fuel is core to our strategy. We are also very happy to contribute making Singapore a frontrunner in zero emission shipping. Yara have experience of manufacturing ammonia at scale and whilst the shipping industry has experience of carrying ammonia as a cargo, we don't yet have experience of using ammonia as a marine fuel. Researching the possible marine engines that will use the fuel falls to man energy solutions. So we got involved in the Kesta initiative because we believe in MAN energy solutions that cross-industry collaboration is important to help drive decarbonisation of the maritime industry. With Samsung Heavy Industries bringing expertise on vessel design and manufacture. Samsung Heavy Industries will always be a good partner for the journey toward decarbonisation. The multi-stakeholder project like Kesta initiative will be the driving force to bring in in an era of energy transition. The Castor Initiative is evidence of what can be achieved, a 360 degree approach to decarbonisation that could be applied across shipping's value chain. But to scale up these projects around the world and to make the innovations commercially viable, governments and policymakers now need to act. We want to hear critical uh, and clear, decisive uh, investment investment in the land-based infrastructure and give the private sector the confidence that, that the land-based infrastructure, which is more national in, in terms of its uh, investment, is moving at the same pace as shipping. So Nick, I'm going to put you in a room at COP26 with all the policy makers. What are you going to demand of them? I'm going to say we can make 5% of zero emission shipping, possibly more, absolutely achievable by 2030. But the worst thing that could happen 
is that five or more percent of the world's ships are capable of running on zero emission fuels and we arrive in key ports around the world to deliver the goods that society in the nations in that room that I'll be speaking to are reliant on and there's zero, no zero emission fuels available for the ship to load. That's the scenario we need to work together on to avoid.